Yes. We are stoked to welcome MFC president to the one and only Mark Pavlovich onto Iconic Eye Radio MMA. Maximum Fighting Championship is one of the top M- MMA shows in the world, and they are putting on one hell of a show May night. You don't want to miss this. This is brought to you by Hayabusa. Welcome to Iconic Eye Radio MMA, Mark Pavlovich. Hey, I'm excited to be here, man. Trust me. <laughs> ah, to have you on. <laughs> yeah, well, listen, listen, the ratings are going to go up. People are going to listen. They want to listen to the Black Prince of MMA. You want to you learn anything today, everybody? Tune in your radio. Tune in on your laptop. Get a piece of paper and a pen and write it down. That's right. I'm ready. I'm, I'm so ready. We got Mark P. in the house. Yes, we do. <laughs> yeah, you're not going to call me to talk about world hunger, about cars, about you know what we should do with the world structure for finances you talk to me about one thing and one thing only mma from a to z you can ask that's That's right (laughs) so starting with mma how did you get started in mma well 14 years ago for 15 years ago i owned a martial arts studio and i also owned an entertainment business and i put the two together and one day about 16 years ago a guy walked in with a Japanese Pancrase VHS tape and I watched Japanese Pancrase and I absolutely said this is I, I couldn't stop watching it and then when I would travel I'd be going into Chinatown and all those cities looking for Pancrase tapes because at that time that's the only place you could find them so I'd be vacationing in Vancouver and I'd go to Chinatown and I'd go look for Japanese Pancrase tapes and that's how it started and and then eventually you know a little bit after i'm like i'm gonna put my entertainment business skills together with mixed martial arts to start the maximum fighting championship awesome that is awesome and mfc 40 is going down may 9th at the shaw conference center in edmonton alberta canada what are your expectations for this card greatness i'm telling everybody like listen i tell everybody this now too i've been in this business almost 15 years I, I see myself in this business for another 10 days, 10 months, 10 years. It doesn't matter anymore. Like before I used to think I'm gonna be in it forever. I'm only gonna be in it as long as I, well, I wanna be at the highest level in my country, which I've, I've eclipsed, there's no one even close to us. I wanna be one of the top shows in the world, which I've done. The, the, the thing is though, if, if I see at any time the quality start to slip, if I start to see guys not fighting with the intensity that I bring when I do business every day, I'm going to walk away from this sport. Because I know deep down the only way we can get to the next level is like with Zufa, the Fertitta brothers saved it. With, with Bellator, Viacom saved it. We don't need to be saved. But for me to play on the playing field with those guys, I need to have bigger business partners involved with the Maximum Fighting Championship to take it to another level. And that's that's just a fact. I've tried to avoid that for 15 years, and the reality is if I really want to get on like on the field and I want to play and really want to throw down, you know, there's only one way it's going to happen. I need bigger business partners, I need bigger funding, or it's not going to happen because we've stayed in this business as long as we have as a family business and run it so with all of your knowledge and all of the things that you have accomplished over the years and you had just touched on MFC being the longest running MMA promotion in Canada and one of the largest in the world tell us how Maximum Fighting Championship is different than any other promotion out there see our our biggest trait and our biggest thing that we're different than everybody else is we've always tried to be our own brand of MMA these other shows have always emulated and tried to be like Zufa. I've, I've been the complete opposite. I, I acknowledge that Zufa is the largest MMA promotion in the world. There's no question they are, and, and that's great. But I've never tried to emulate them. Listen, we're in a ring, which I've always thought MMA should be in a ring, not in a cage. I've always thought, you know, we've, we got red gloves. Everybody else has got black gloves. We got, you know, this is just the things that we've done over the years. You notice I don't use profanity when I speak in an interview, which we know who does all the time. Um, you know, that's the difference. I, I'm different in every way. And, and I've been I've been criticized and chastised because people want us to bow at the altar to Zufa. And I would rather quit MMA than do that. I, I you know, I like I told you earlier, I, I think that the biggest show, there's no question the biggest show on the planet. They probably will always be the biggest show on the planet. But at the same time as 
uh, you know, I just wanted my own brand, you know, and I've, I've always lived by that and I've lived with it for 15 years. I love that. Now, I'm going to ask you about a quote I heard, and I love this quote, that you guys are the Daniel Bryan of MMA. And I had the opportunity to hear that interview, and I just loved it where how you explained it. Could you do a quick recap with our audience? Because the difference is this. We're, like, you have to understand. Look at the game, the way it's been set up. The Zufa and the UFC has been run by the Fertitta brothers, okay? They were finished. The UFC was done, okay? The only reason what saved it was was money. And, and, and it was like, you know, people were behind it to some degree. And then Bellator, I don't believe any, I don't believe there's an overabundance of people behind that organization. They were going belly up. And, and Viacom came along and saved them. I've never watched that show once in my life. And it's funny because the fans that we have and the loyalty of the fans we have, all the way from coast to coast, in the United States, in Canada, in Germany, in Australia, everywhere, they support us. That's the only reason why we've stayed alive for this long. If you understand mathematically, financially, everything. It's impossible in the MMA business to stay as long as we have without, first of all, without Access TV with Mark Cuban, who's our, who's our broadcasting business partner, and we have great sponsors, but we still don't have the money like these other shows do. And like I said, we're, we are, we're like the Daniel Bryan of MMA. We're the only, like to stay alive the way we have is solely on great fans supporting us the way they have from all over the world because they have that feeling like we're like that little engine that could. We're like, I tell everybody, we're like Rocky one, two, three, four, five. We're that happy ending. We're, you know, we're that Daniel Bryan of, M of MMA. You know, it's like you want to see us do good. People do deep down in their heart. They want to see the MSG succeed because we're like, you know, there's the Walmarts and we're that mom and pop shop. But you know, we're going to be honest with you. You know, we're going to take care of things where you we're not going to be dishonest. And, and, and we're still surviving in the Walmart world. And that's that, that just people can't understand that. Yeah, I agree. I mean, we've talked to a few of your fighters already. They've had nothing but good things to say about MFC and how supportive you guys are. And we're seeing it on a daily basis as well. Well, you, you see all the people over the years that have fought in the Maximum Fighting Championship. Ben Henderson, Paul Daly, Jason McDonald, Patrick Cote. I mean, I, I, it's comical sometimes because I can't remember all the people that fought in our organization. But people go, oh, I, you know, I remember him fighting him. I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot about him. You know, it's like he's big. And, but the moral of the story is our family's always done that. And it's, it's just something that we do and we're so good at it. And the diff like I told you, the di we're so different in every way than everybody else. And we've been chastised for that because people are like, well, you have to be like them, you know? And I'm like, no, I'm not like them, right? You know, I, I think you could go ask someone that, you know, that would understand this is like companies in over the world, like Pepsi sitting around with Coca-Cola and saying, you know, why don't you be more like them? And the people at Coca-Cola say, are you crazy? We're Coca-Cola, they're Pepsi. And that's how I've always felt. I've always felt like we're just that other brand of MMA that you watched and you go, wow, these guys are awesome. And, and that's the reality of it. We're, we're not we're not a feeder system for the UFC. We're, we're a brand that, that runs, functions, and guys make livings in the Maximum Fighting Championship. And that's the difference. And, you know, yes, of course, I think deep down every fighter wants to inspire to be in the UFC. But, I, you know, most guys know that if they come to the MFC and they overlook the MFC, UFC will never happen for them because the sharks in the water in the Maximum Fighting Championship have very, sheep, very, very sharp teeth. Mm -hmm. ah, that is so true. Oh, my gosh. Now, I have to ask you, when you hear, like, other promotions calling out different promotions um, to do, like, a cross-promotion MMA match, is that something that you would maybe consider, or do you think that's just bullcrap? That's impossible, guys, because I hate every other promoter in this industry. I hate them. I don't like any of them. I, listen, the only one I do have respect for is Dana White, but I can't stand any other ones. There's not one I even remotely speak with. I like the girl that does Invicta. I think what she's doing is a smart thing. I, I, I do respect her, so I, I, I'm taking her out of the equation. But, I, like, if you do, if I, I can start to go down the list of, like, and in my country, I despise them. They're so disrespectful. They have no class. 
they have no no even reason to open their mouth because this sport wouldn't even exist if my family didn't do it in this country. And it's like I just I've always had such a disdain for them. And in in America, really, I don't even watch any other brand of MMA. Like I said, the only one I would have a remote respect for would be the UFC. Outside that, though, I just have such a like a, you know like I hate to use this term, but you know when you have something in your throat and you want to spit. Yeah. That's how I look at that. That's how I look at that. Wow, you know. I had read an interview that you had done and you had talked about tombstones in your yard with every promotion that has basically gone out of business. Tell us a little only bit about... Only on Halloween. That's only on Halloween. And my, and my wife, who, who's, who's my business partner, she has put a veto to that. She says she says that's not tasteful. And she <laughs> she has put a kibar stones on, on Halloween. They are not allowed on the front lawn anymore. <laughs> but but uh, 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 me, <laughs> they are not. And listen, she, she, she's my wife. I love her. She's been with me for 27 years. And, and at the same time, she is my business partner. And like I said, you know, even comically that I want to do stuff like that, there's always someone there to, to have better judgment. And that's how our family runs, right? I mean, I do something funny and comical, but you could call it stupid, and put those tombstones on my front yard. But my, my wife understands that we're running a professional sports organization and she's like no we can't do that because people came and were like videotaping it and you know putting it on on the <laughs> internet and you know it was fu- it was funny you know but I, I i think it's funny but she doesn't so <laughs> right that that's what <laughs> wife or that's what wives are yeah. for well, she's my business partner too. That's what people don't understand. She, she's my business partner, and she doesn't. She thinks that you know that stuff is. No, we don't need to do that. She's right. Deep down, she's right. But I've never really grown up, so for me, it's hard. <laughs> I don't think we uh, any of us have. Well, we know MSC is a family business. Tell us how instrumental it is to keep that in the family. Well, it's it, it's been unbelievable experience and at the same time is it, it, it could be the demise of it as well because like I said you've seen what what happened with Zufa you've seen what happened with Bellator you know you have to inject larger sums of money no everybody already knows that knowledge wise there's not no one that can compete with us the only downfall is injecting you know money into the organization that's the difference and uh, we know that now. And we have huge corporate sponsors that we love. They're awesome. But still not enough. It's not even close. And that's it's come to the point now after all these years that we actually see now we have to sell ownership of, of the company by, you know, by 50%. And we have to do those type of things if we really... Or we can just say we're going to retire and call it a day. Because our family, we, we could be doing this like the way we're doing for the next 50 years. But we're never going to be number one in the world. And, you know... I, I really always thought that we could be number two for sure. And most people would put us in the three or four range. And the only reason why a show like Bellator would ever be ahead of me is the sole purpose is money. Listen, I'm going to say this once once and for all. Bjorn Rebney could not stand in the room with me for one second the second we started talking about MMA. He is a buffoon that came from the boxing world and that then some way somehow amalgamated into the MMA world. He doesn't have one ounce of, of understanding about this sport because they, that, they were finished, okay, finished. And because Viacom didn't make the deal with UFC and renew with them, they did it with Bellator. That's the only thing that saved them. That guy doesn't have a creative bone in his body. And, and it's like, I just, you know, I could stay politically correct for so long about certain things. But like I said, he, it just, I I watched the show, one fight in their show one time when Eddie Alvarez fought. And that's the only time I watch one show. You can't even get that show in HD in Canada. And that just kind of tells you where they're at on the grand scheme of things. But right. all, all in all, I, I see all these kind of shows come in and come out. And, you know, they pick their fights with us. And, and like I said, maybe I'm getting done fighting, but I, I'm not done telling the truth. Right. <laughs> Definitely. Yes, you, trust, me, tr- trust me when I tell you, if Viacom would have came to the Maximum Fighting Championship, say if I wasn't with Access P, which is awesome, um, the story would be very different right now. Trust me. You know, because even deep down, these other shows will never fight with me, really. And, and, and they know I'm not scared of anybody when it comes to the MMA. I'm scared of a lot of things in this world, but when it comes to the MMA world, I'm not scared of anybody. Yeah, we see that. Yeah, that's what's up. Because <laughs> see, I know I had gravitated towards you because I know growing up, uh, you were just across the river from me in Windsor, if I'm correct. And see, oh, I kind of Detroit. 
Oh yes, sir. Three one three all day. So that's oh, why I, I, I got Detroit in my heart forever. Don't ever forget. Like that's one thing I've never. That, like I am such a Detroit person. I, I I grew up in more in Detroit than in Windsor. Um, I I absolutely love it there. I'm a huge uh, Detroit Lions fan, Detroit Tigers fan. Detroit, everything, everything Detroit, I'm a fan of. It just since I was a kid, and I, it's never going to stop. That's what's up. That's totally what's up. See now, when you see Sam Alvey, you need to remind him because when we had a brief conversation, he had <laughs> reminded me that he was a Packers fan. So yeah, just let him That's know. That's disgusting, isn't it? Is that disgusting? He said oh, to me too when he comes here. I'm like, oh my god, I I, I can't stand the Packers. And my dad's a Packers fan too, and I I don't know, I don't understand how that happened. And, uh, yeah. yeah, I'm all Detroit, man. I'm telling you right now, like, you know, Lafayette, Coney Island, Greek Town, you know, Mexico Village. I, I lived in those places, and I, I still tell people, you know, like, I live in Edmonton, Canada, which I love very much, but they don't, they couldn't make a Coney Dog here to save their life. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> here you go. That's the, I'm good now. I'm, I'm, you just made my day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love Detroit. I Listen, I walk in the streets of Detroit, and I'm telling you right now, people's all crime and all this other stuff. I walk everywhere. I've never had a problem ever in Detroit. You know, I know there is, there's bad places everywhere in the world. And if there was a city that deserved, um, you know, that second chance, it's Detroit, man. I just, I can't even tell you that my Uncle Marty played for Detroit Red Wings, won four Stanley Cups for the Detroit Red Wings. This is what I'm trying to tell you, man. I'm tied to that city. Oh, yes. That's what's up. Hockey Town and all of that. Yeah, I'm yeah, I'm just like ear to ear now, smiling. You know, I'm, I'm good. I yeah, I love my... it. And, and if, if I go, I, I remember, like, I can tell you, like, you know, all the times and all the experiences I had when I was growing up in Detroit in that area. And I always, people used to ask me, where are you from? And I, I, I grew up in Windsor, but I lived in Detroit. You know I mean? It's like, it's like I, I had no kind of connection to Windsor, but my connection was always to Detroit. I was like so fascinated with it as a child. And then, of course, I loved Joe Lewis as a boxer, right? I, I, I trained at Kronk Gym when I was a kid, and I was the only white kid that walked in that gym at that time. You know, you and that was at the time. That was at the time when Tommy Hearns was there. That was at the time. You know, it was crazy, and I just remember all that. Yes, sir. Yes, because Emmanuel Lewis, the hitman. I mean, Emmanuel Lewis, yeah. Rest in peace. Yeah. Totally, that's what's up. Because, see, I knew right when you started to explain that, I was like, wow, he, he sounded like he's from Detroit. And with saying that, you know, I have, I don't fear no one in MMA. That's that Detroit attitude. Mm -hmm. I love it. I totally love it. And you know what it is. It's a, it's, it's, you know what's funny? It's that blue collar mentality that always fights. You always have that chip on your shoulder to some degree. You all, you know, it's funny. You can't call the people in that area of the country lazy because they're not. They're, they're the oh. hardest working people in America in that in that region. They've always been like that, and, and it, it, it's a really shame when I see what's going on there right now. And, but I started to see recently a lot of big companies are starting to move into Detroit and not in the auto industry. I've seen that was it Facebook or Twitter that both open offices in deep downtown Detroit. Um, huh? Some other big companies are starting to do that, and I love to see that. Yes, same here, because I've been gone for a while, but my heart is always in Detroit. Mm -hmm. Definitely yeah, it of is. Of course, of course. Inquiring minds want to know, would you ever consider bringing the MFC to the U.S.? You know, we, we're, we're applying for our license in Nevada right now, and, and, and that's the next step for us, too. It's, we've never, it's not that we haven't wanted to go to the States. The difference is the economy in Canada is so much better than the United States. The ticket pricing where we live right now is like, it's $600 to sit in the front row. And there's nowhere in the States right now that you can charge $600 to sit in the front row. And and that's the difference. I mean, you know, especially Alberta, Canada, it's the oil capital. It's, oil is just crazy here. And the, I mean, the unemployment rate's about 3%. I mean, you can, 3%, it's crazy. Yeah, I need to go to Canada. <laughs> yeah, Canada, Canada, I mean, I've always thought that too. I love America, but I, I've always, you know, Canada is where, it, where, for me, where it's at, I mean, you know, with Medicare and there's a lot, like I said, there's not an overabundance of un unemployment in Canada. And, and that's the difference, right? I like money more than I like anything else. Right. Yeah. Don't we all? Yeah. I mean, seriously. Yeah. Like... <laughs> yeah. We all want to make money. We all want to live a good life. I mean, it doesn't matter if it snows or rains. You don't got money. It doesn't mean anything. I mean, you, you can't live properly. Well, right. that's true. That's very true. Yeah. Now, well, let's get yeah. back 
Me MFC 40. How about some early fight predictions for Sam Alvey versus Wes Wolford? Do you think it will go past the third round? No. No way. No way. Uh, like I told everybody, one's going to be at the after party, one's going to be at the hospital. I just don't know which one. Um, you have to understand the, the level of what those two guys fight at. I mean, the way they do it, it's like, oh, it's just going to be a mess. I mean, I tell that to everybody. I'm looking at this fight card. I'm like, there's, there's going to be a lot of pain, you know, on May 9th. And, you know, I don't know what, no other way to put it. I mean, there's just so many between Alvy and, and Swafford, between, you know, Marcus Edwards' fight, between Kurt Southern and Galecchio, the rematch. Um, you know, we have K1 fighter, K1 fighter too, right? We have... Uh, you know Shane Campbell on the on the you know so we have a lot of you know it's crazy yes well we've spoken with Sam Alvey and we just spoke with Marcus Edwards and he has some major bad intentions for that fight what other matchups are you looking forward to for this card um I'm looking for the return of Victor Valamaki I mean uh he, he is a former MFC champ at 205. He's making his return. He's still young enough to make his return. I'm looking forward to seeing what he's going to do. Of course, I'm looking forward to see, you know, the, the two title fights I'm, I, I'm extremely stoked to watch. And, you know, like I said, it, it's like I hate to sound like a promoter all the time, but this show, like I tell everybody, tune into Access TV, your home for MMA, on, uh, on May 9th. And I'm telling you, like, I know what's going to happen. I, I, I can't rescue i know what's going to happen because when you put fights together like this it's it's just sometimes just magic man and that's that's what i want and i want i want fans to, to understand that you know i i was i'm not trying to be defiant toward i know everybody wants us to bow down to the ufc but it's not in my dna man i just i can't be like that i i, I just want you to understand that there's more brands of mma out there than the ufc the sport's not called ufc it's called mma it's called mixed martial arts and the Maximum Fighting Championship has always been there for 15 years to remind people of that fact. Yes. Yeah, I love that. And that actually led right into my next question. What's your take on the popularity, like the boom of MMA? Because like you mentioned, there are some promotions, sometimes in my opinion, does more harm than good. Not speaking necessarily of the UFC, I have my opinions with that as well. But the other promotions, you see some just like the lingerie league, or you know, when they're trying to make a parody of it. Oh yeah, fight yeah I don't like none of, I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't like any of that. So that's, you know, I'm very clear on that. I'm a, I'm a traditionalist when it comes to this sport. I, I've been here since the beginning. Um, you know, I'm not some Johnny Come Lately that just jumped on the bandwagon because I thought, oh, this is just something cool that I want to watch. Um, that's, that's the big difference, and that's what people don't understand. It's like, you know, when I, when I see those type of things, it just sickens me and sa same with when i see when i see um you know these tag team yes. you see some of this new stuff this tag team uh mma stuff and i just think it's such an embarrassment to the sport i think anybody that's promoting that's an absolute idiot and, and like i said I, I i can't stand it i i, I just disgust it i saw one the other day where it was like teams against teams and it was like five guys from one country against five guys from another country. And they were all fighting at the same time. And then the one guy was left at the end. And there was like four guys beating on him at the same time. And it's like, come on, man. I mean, this just puts us backwards. And it's like, people don't understand. It's like, we're still on thin ice on the grand scheme of things. We're not as mainstream as everybody thinks we are. We still got so much farther to go. And everybody's got to clean up their act, including Dana White, including Zufa including the way they speak when they're on live interviews, all that kind of stuff, right? When you got fighters like Ronda Rousey spouting off and the way she shoots her mouth off and the stupid things that come out of her mouth. Yep. All of us all of us are responsible. Do you understand? I've always felt I've always felt that the preservation of the sport is more important than the maximum fighting championship or my own personal beliefs. I think we all have to start being more accountable for what comes out of our mouth and how we present this sport. And we would go so much farther if everybody, forget if we don't like each other, forget if we're all competing with each other, that's not necessary. The, the, the most important part though is that we all have the preservation of mixed martial arts to most importantly in front of anything else. And if we do that, our sport could resonate to the highest levels. But if we don't do that, which we're, we're not doing right now, 
we will stay where we are right now, which is a, a huge sport with a cult following. Mm-hmm. Oh, you you described that to the T because we were just talking behind uh, behind the scenes. I was just saying that I wish this whole Ronda Rousey versus Floyd Mayweather crap would go away. Because I said that's more yeah. problem than you would want. Because once you're saying a guy can fight a girl, yeah, and that's just opening a can of worms. And it's like it's so stupid. Yeah, it's just, it's it is. Just, why would you feed into it's, it? It's embarrassing to talk about. Like I said, it's like that's like saying that's like saying to Ronda, why don't you box Floyd? You know what I mean? It's like so stupid how we talk in our industry. Listen, I love James Tony as a boxer, but when he came into MMA and, and, and UFC did that, I thought to myself, really, guys? You really want to make us look more stupid than than what's going on right now in the sport? When James Tony fought um, Randy Couture, like that, that to me was like so stupid. If they wanted to make something exciting, they should have said, okay, we're going to do MMA for one round and then we're gonna box for the next round. We're gonna see how Randy does that. You know, it's like, yeah, listen, I have a great esteem for boxing too as well. Like, I love boxing. So that's why they're separate sports. Why don't we just tell hockey players, hey, why don't you come over and try to play in the NFL? I mean, it's so stupid, but they do it. And that's the and that's the part that drives me nuts. It's like, that's just crazy. Right. <laughs> totally agree. We, I think all three of us agree with that statement fully. Now, all the years that you have been doing, what is the craziest experience you have encountered? Uh, I've had so many that I don't even remember. Like, they're just, they've all kind of washed into the... I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know. I can't even remember, like... There's weird stuff that's happened. I just don't know. I was trying to think, like, what would be the weirdest or craziest. No, I don't even know. I really don't. <laughs> I, I had, I had two, I had two heavyweights a long time ago fall into the third row one time. That was crazy, right? I mean, <laughs> oh, they went wow. right into the third. They, they went right into the third row. Scott Junk and Jimmy Ambrose went into the third row and they continued to fight when they were out into the crowd. That was pretty weird. Yeah. Like, I've never seen... Like, they didn't stop. They kept fighting like they were on the floor of the, the arena and they were still fighting. It was crazy. Oh, my wow. gosh. I would have paid to see that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, crazy. Well, looking back, would you do any... Would you have done anything different? No. No, I wouldn't have. You know, it's like, whatever we could do to the level we're at right now, we couldn't have did anything different to get to here. I mean, in business with Mark Cuban for Access TV, we were on TSN, the largest sport network in Canada, uh, on HD. Uh, we're all, you know, also with the Fight Network in Canada. You know, we've had so many great sponsors. Even now, with Yokohama Tire and the Crystal Blast and Retire, these these great sponsors. And Access TV has been our, you know, they've been awesome with us. They've they, they, you know, they're incredible. But like I said, the only way we're going to get to the next level, we have to inject so much more money into this to get there. And if it doesn't happen within the next, we kind of have a time frame between everybody with the same last name as me. If we don't, if we don't get that within a certain time frame, we are going to, I don't want to say exit from this business, but we would retire from this business. Because we, we, if you can only take it to a certain point, for people like us, that's very frustrating. You know what I mean? Because you can't get it to the next, next, next level without injecting large sums of money. Oh, yeah. Now, one last question before we let you go. If the MSC wore a warning label, what would it say? <laughs> it would say, <laughs> it would say, don't, don't touch too hot. You know, one of those ones. It would say something like that. So. Nice. <laughs> Be careful, it's too, you know what I mean? Because it is, man. Everybody knows, even the fighters know when they're listening to this interview. They know what I expect. They know there's no excuses here. They know, they like, they know, like, you know, Sam Elvey's going to smile and be all nice the way he is. But when he fights, he has some kind of thing inside of him that makes him different. He's very violent when he fights. He's looking to knock people out. That's, that's what everybody knows when they come here. It's a different vibe, man. The whole place is different, you know, because everybody in my family has like the intensity that I have, and we 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 work so hard to put together a show that we expect the fighters to to listen. I can promote a show. I can tell you how great it's going to be. But if Sam Elvey and Wes Swafford go in there and dry hump each other for five rounds, 
Then what? You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> then what? Then what? So then they make me look like a liar, right? And that's what I don't want. So I try to instill into them that, hey, guys, well, I'm telling people that this is going to happen. I expect that you're going to make this happen. Because that's the only way I could look like a liar if they don't do what I'm telling everybody's going to happen. Right. Right. Exactly. Uh-huh. And my intention is never to lie to people. It's never to lie to people. Oh, exactly. Yeah. I totally agree. Well, I want to remind everybody, once more, MSC 40 is going down May 9th at the Shaw Conference Center in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. It's also on Access TV. If you can't get your tickets to go to the show and see it in person, Mark, it was wonderful having you on the show today. I am, we are so excited to watch this event, and it's been such a, such a total joy. Now, tell well, our thanks, list- thanks for Thanks for having us on. I really appreciate it. Anytime, but before... We let you go. Tell our listeners how to get tickets. Well, you can go to Ticketmaster.ca, not .com because of Canada. So it's Ticketmaster.ca, or you can call the Maximum Fighting Ticket Hotline at 780-504-2024. And you can go to our website as well at MaximumFighting.com. And you can you can go to the top of the page and just click tickets, and it'll take you right to the place to get tickets. So Awesome. Now, tell everyone where they can follow you. Well, you can follow us on Twitter at Maximum Funding, and of course, my own personal one at Mark Pavlich. And of course, you can go to our Facebook pages, Maximum Fighting, uh, on Instagram, on YouTube, Maximum Fighting TV on YouTube, uh, everywhere. It doesn't stop, man. Twenty four seven. Awesome! And everybody, remember to punch the vote on Twitter. Yes. There you go. Awesome. All right. Thank you, Mark so much for joining us today it was a pleasure and we cannot wait you have a great weekend you too and keep it rolling everybody keep it rolling no doubt and you have a good one it was a pleasure all right bye-bye bye-bye